Ni hao, and welcome to episode 10 of my vlog about Mao's China. Um, <clears throat> last time we were looking at the causes of the Cultural Revolution, um, and this time we're building on that to look at um, how the Cultural Revolution um, descended into anarchy um, in the Red Guards, uh, the hands of the Red Guards, and what's called the Red Terror uh, phase, and, and what the impact of, of that time was. So last time we said that the Cultural Revolution was announced uh, in May of 1966, um, but really it kicks off kind of in practical terms in August of 1966 with uh, eight mass rallies in Tiananmen Square, um, starting uh, with the first one on the 18th of August. And in these mass rallies, the students, uh, largely young people that attend, um, are bussed in by the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, they're given free train passes afterwards to disperse across China and um, wherever they like um, to take with them the message that the four olds are to be attacked. Old custom or customs, old culture, old ideas uh, and old habits. And that they are to be the, um, the vanguard, the front uh, line of the Cultural Revolution to change China from a country that thinks and acts um, and lives in a, in a non-communist way to being a place that is communist, not just in its outworkings and policies, but also in its heart and, and in its soul and in its culture. Famously at those mass rallies, uh, you might see the pictures of um, a young uh, female student called Song Bin Bin putting a, an armband on Mao. And this is where the idea of the red armbands de designating who is like a red guard comes from. Or, or they, yeah, that's why it became famous. She came to the notice of Mao because she had left, uh, led a protest uh, against the education system that had led to the murder of her teacher, who was beaten to death with uh, wooden sticks. Uh, Mao uh, learned that her name Bin Bin, or knew that her name Bin Bin, uh, meant refined or suave. But he said that actually she should change her name to be uh, Song something else, uh, which meant warrior or martial. Uh, it's Yahweh, I think, uh, but I didn't write that down, unfortunately. Um, in August and September, the Red Guards then spill out uh, from Tiananmen Square in Beijing across the country, and they conduct that campaign against the Four Olds. That campaign was vaguely defined by Lin and Miao, uh, Lin and Mao, uh, on purpose. Um, later on, the Ministry of Public Security passes the Red Guards' names of people that they want to um, uh, they want to be targeted so that it becomes kind of more organized but at the start it's very much kind of for the red guards themselves to decide at what constitutes or who constitutes representatives of these four olds um, for example then uh, in october uh, red guard demonstrations against both lu xiaoqi and dong xiaoping led to them being dismissed from their government and their uh, communist party posts uh, and by November, factory and office workers were also forming their own Red Guard units. It wasn't just a movement of young people, uh, students, um, but also these uh, factory and office workers leading to an increase uh, in violence and chaos uh, around the country. So um, thinking about how uh, Mao and to an extent Lin Biao and Jiang Qing and the Gang of Four, how do they control uh, young people? Well, it's through uh, the mechanisms that they have at their disposal. So firstly, through the education system, which had been set up to um, indoctrinate uh, these young people from an early age into the ideals of communism. So they're already kind of uh, schooled in that area. And then through the mass rallies, where they're um, again indoctrinated, but also empowered by the speakers, including Mao. Um, the cult of personality, the idea of Mao being this sort of uh, emperor type, godlike figure who uh, it's his thought and his ideas that China was following. The Little Red Book exemplifies that on a day to day basis. They can read his quotes and his wisdom, as it were, and work out how to how to follow that. What would Mao do is a kind of mantra that they might follow. And it's worth bearing in mind also that the Red Guards are recruited uh, mostly from middle schools. So these are young people that they're manipulating. And in the beginning, most of them, or lots of them at least, were, were children of party cadres. So they're already committed to the Communist Party cause. Later on, children from so-called black elements could join in. So the country was um, divided into red elements, who were people who had followed the communist way, and black elements, which were people who were from 
dubious backgrounds, perhaps they had nationalist parents or grandparents um, uh, or, or people that had not enthusiastically supported the Communist Party. Um, children uh, of black elements could join the um, Red Guards later on. Both these groups, the children with um, party, um, uh, party, party parents, for want of a better word, um, and those who'd been excluded, both of them can see the career benefits to themselves of being in the Red Guards and are enthusiastically embracing that. For the black elements, it's a chance to kind of save their family, as it were, and, and perhaps their future. And for the, the party indoctrinated already, this is a chance to, to cement your future within the party. So what was the impact uh, of the Red Terror? Well, uh, the Red Guards are reckoned to have murdered uh, at least one million people. Um, and there's a, a big political um, element of that. There's quite a lot of stats here, but I'll pop through them quickly. Two thirds of the Central Committee um, and 14 out of 23 Politburo members, about two thirds as well, were deposed. So that's right at the top level, about two thirds of the, the Communist Party members were removed. Um, four out of six regional party first secretaries and 23 out of 29 provincial party secretaries also removed. So um, centrally, regionally, also big impact, bigger impact, in fact. Um, yeah, you could say that's kind of like two thirds of them are removed. And then between 70 and 80 percent of regional and provincial CCP cadres were purged as well. So a huge amount of the Communist Party leadership and bureaucracy um, at the top, uh, but all the way down to the regional level are removed. At least, uh, well, an estimated 3 million bureaucrats and cadres were exiled to the countryside. Um, and also just in terms of like how people acted, um, there are, there's a big impact just on people's behaviour. So, for example, Western influence in fashion and hairstyles uh, was um, pushed out. Uh, heads were shaved in correction stations if you had those um, wrong hairstyles. Switchboard operators answered the phones by saying, long live Chairman Mao. And there are um, lots of examples of passengers having to perform a loyalty dance before they could board the train. So just in day to day ways, uh, people's lives were affected and impacted. But um, politically, um, there's a big impact upon who's in charge. And if you think about Mao resurrecting his political control of China, that would be a real place to go to say this is um, this is evidence of that. Also, a huge cultural impact uh, of the Cultural Revolution, as you might expect. Uh, temples, sculptures, statues and artefacts were destroyed or defaced. Uh, around a third of, uh, sorry, across five provinces, this is around a third of 1,100 libraries were closed and more than 7 million library books were lost, stolen or destroyed. So that's across five provinces, not across the whole of China. The Confucius Temple in Shandong, the resting place of Confucius, was attacked. Um, six and a half thousand registered artifacts were destroyed. Two thousand graves, graves were defaced. Um, a good example of a, an individual, Wu Sun. Um, so Wu is W U, um, and Sun is X U N. Maybe it should be Shun actually. Wu Shun, a knight who was a nineteenth-century educational reformer, was his grave was dug up, and his body was broken up and burned um, in protest. Um, in Tibet, monasteries were attacked and looted, statues were destroyed, Buddhist scripts were used as toilet paper. Um, the Cultural Revolution has a huge cultural impact. And what they're trying to do there is to destroy the four olds and to um, wipe them away so that China can become a more purely communist country. Um, a massive education impact as well. Um, uh, there is a sense, a very real sense, in which any sort of education, uh, meaningful education, just stopped for much of the Cultural Revolution. And that, of course, is the impact uh, of the Cultural Revolution. A census was compiled, compiled in 1982, six years after Mao's death, uh, which said that less than 1% of the working population had a university deg degree uh, in 1982. Only 11% had received schooling after the age of 16. About a quarter had received schooling between the ages of 12 and 16. And uh, around a th just over a third had received schooling up to the age of 12. Now, not all of that will be the impact of the Cultural Revolution, but much of that's the impact of the Cultural Revolution. And you could pick any one of those stats to, to kind of prove the point that just education just stops. There's also a massive economic impact of the Cultural Revolution. The economy is hugely disrupted. Um, and uh, although in theory there was a third five year plan from 1966 to 1970, it was abandoned, even though that wasn't really officially uh, admitted. 
Um, there are statistics between 1966 and 76, which say that industrial production fell by 13.8%. Steel output fell from 15 million tonnes to 11 million tonnes. Coal output from 260 million tonnes to 206 million tonnes. That's about um, 20%. Uh, oil production fell from 15 million tonnes to 13 million tonnes. It's not huge, but um, still going down. Construction fell by a third. A rail freight declined from 555 million tonnes to 421 million tonnes. So again, it's about 20% um, by my calculations. Hopefully they're right. Uh, and the PRC's deficit uh, increased from 1 billion yuan uh, to 2.25 billion yuan. So more than doubling in those 10 years, from six, 10 years of the Cultural Revolution from 66 to 76. Um, agriculture suffered a bit less severely because it was much more focused, or the disruption was much more focused on urban areas. But nevertheless, agriculture production fell by 1.5%. Uh, grain production declined from 213 million tonnes in 1966 to 209 million tonnes in 76. Um, cotton production actually rose uh, from 2.35 million tonnes to 2.38 million tonnes, but essentially it's, it's basically the same, I would say. And the government's response to shortages was uh, to resort to austerity, calling on the masses to practice frugality while making revolution. Rationing became normal. Um, the assets of state companies were frozen. Lending by banks were heavily restricted and permits were required to travel from one province to another. Um, a couple of examples of the impact upon individuals uh, who, within the Cultural Revolution. Uh, Lao Xi, uh, was a famous playwright, Lao Shi is spelled L-A-O, she is S-H-E. Um, his house was bound, burned down, um, he was beaten, and forced to wear a dunce's hat, which sounds funny, but of course isn't, in a struggle meeting. The struggle meeting is in front of loads of people, basically loads of people shouting abuse at you, and you're sat at the front having to take that. Um, he ended up drowning himself in Taiping Lake in August 1966. He was aged 67 at the time. Uh, Ding Ling, which is spelled exactly how it sounds, uh, was an author. Um, she had already been purged in the Hunter Flowers campaign, but she was targeted again. She was forced to stand for hours in the airplane position, which is where your hands, are, uh, your arms are kind of pulled back and you're thrust forward. Um, the airplane position uh, made to sleep in a stable. She spent five years in jail and was sentenced to another 12 years doing manual labour on a farm um, before being rehabilitated. Uh, in 1978. So these are just examples of the way in which it affected or impacted upon individual people. And of course, there's a great variety to um, that story, um, but worth kind of knowing one or two. So um, just in conclusion, I have a consideration of how effective the Red Guards were in carrying out this cultural revolution. Um, did they help create a more communist culture in a PRC? Well, yes, in one sense they did. They, uh, the attack on the four odds was effective. It does, however um, unpleasant you might think of it, it, it does remove um, those old, um, uh, that old culture in a kind of physical way, um, definitely. And capitalist rodors were also removed. So um, the kind of purification, I guess, of China um, did happen in that fire uh, of the Red Terror. But um, it's absolutely true that uh, whilst you can remove the physical um, old um old, uh, what are they, customs, culture, the physical old culture can be removed. The old customs and the old habits are ingrained in people's heads and hearts, and, and they are much harder to remove as persecution throughout history can show us. Uh, respect for ancestors, for instance, remained, and you can see that later on uh, in the story. They also create greater inequality. The destruction of, of education meant that uh, people's um, social positions were kind of locked in because they that social mobility is is driven by education often um, and you'd have to say that the, the the red guards were destructive rather than constructive so they do tear things down but they don't replace them effectively with anything and they're not trying to to be fair so um do they create a more communist culture in the prc well kind of but not in a very effective way um do they uh help uh, mao regain control well again You'd have to say yes. In many ways, they protest um, specifically and explicitly against Liu and Dung. Um, they uh, fire up the cult of Mao and spread that um, across um, the PRC um, so that everybody knows that they have to um, buy into the cult of Mao, even if they're doing that um, reluctantly. 
two thirds, we said, of the, of the Politburo are deposed and a massive amount of uh, political upheaval all over the country. And a million people are murdered. Um, and those people are the ones that are identified as being disloyal to Mao. So they do help Mao regain control. And I would say they're, they're kind of stronger on this. That said, it's not all down to the Red Guards. Mao inspires it and engineers it. Um, and there is some um, engineering and uh, pointing of the Red Guards towards particular targets. And it's not just Mao that benefits. Uh, Jiang Qing, um, leader of the Gang of Four and wife of Mao, has her old movie friends killed um, or arrested uh, as well. And Lin Biao, of course, benefits hugely um, and becomes leader of the PA, PLA and second in charge uh, of the whole of PRC by um, the early 70s. So do they help Mao regain control? Yes, I would say I think you can be more strong on this, but it's not quite as simple as just that. I uh, hope that helps. Um, next time we'll look at uh, the winding down of the Cultural Revolution. Um, I'll see you then.